Now, let's see how we can do lighting in OpenGL. And I'm going to use this program right here, which we're actually scrapping the program that we've been building up for the last three lessons and starting with a new one. So here it is. Um, we have our init rendering function right here with a couple of new functions, or rather, a couple of new calls. Um, we have GL enable GL lighting to turn on lighting. And by the way, you can call GL disable GL lighting if you want to turn it off. It's the same way with every one of these GL enables. Just call GL disable if you want to turn it off. Now we're going to have two lighting sources, so we're going to enable these two lighting sources, number zero and number one. Actually, you can have a bunch of different lighting sources. You can have at least eight in your scene. And then we're going to call GL enable GL normalize, which I'll get back to in a second. Now, here is our draw scene function. The first thing we have right here is the ambient lighting. And ambient light is something that shines everywhere in our scene by the same amount. So, every face gets lit the same amount. It actually has no real world equivalent, but it would be really hard to simulate all the lighting sources so well that every single face gets enough light so that it doesn't look completely black. It turns out that that's hard to do, so what graphics artists do is they just add this little ambient light on. And the way we do it in OpenGL is we call GL light model FV with the first parameter as GL light model ambient, and the second parameter as an array of GL floats. GL floats are kind of like floats, um, but what uh, the compiler will do is it'll automatically convert these floats into GL floats. So our array right here, um, these first three parameters are the intensity of the ambient light, the, actually the color and the intensity. So we want a pretty weak ambient light, so we put 0.2 for all of these. They're not technically a color because they can even be greater than one, for instance, if you want it to be really bright. They're just an intensity for each of the different color components. So if we were to put one for each of these, it would look it would look just like it did if we had no light. And we're going to put 0.2, which is 20% lighting. And this fourth parameter is just one. Just leave it at one. And here's our first lighting source. We're adding a positioned lighting source, which is going to be at a particular position in our scene. So for, for this um, lighting source, we have to set up a couple of things. We have to set the color intensity by calling GL light FV. The first parameter is GL light zero because we are setting it for light number zero. The second parameter is GL diffuse to tell it that we're setting the color. And the third parameter is light color zero, this array right here. And it gives you the intensity of the light, which is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. And again, this fourth element is just one. Then we have another call to GL light FV. And the first parameter is GL light zero again. The second parameter is GL position, because we want to tell OpenGL the position of our light. And the third one is this array right here, which is the position. These first three parameters are x, y, and z coordinates of the position, and they are relative to the current transformation. So we want to position the light at 4, 0, 8 relative to the current transformation. And this last one will just have 1. Then we want to add directed light to our scene, which shines in one particular direction across the whole scene the same amount. So, again, we have two calls to GL light FV. We have um, the color intensity right here, which this time we'll use 0 0.5, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, which makes it sort of a reddish light, because there's more red component. And again, this last one is just one. And then we set the position of the light. We need to tell OpenGL what direction it's coming from. So, same idea. GL light FV, GL light 1 for light number 1, GL position for the position, and then the third parameter is this array right here. We want the light to come from 
the direction negative 1, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So mostly from the negative x direction and also a little bit up and a little bit in. Away, f uh, in, out of, sorry, out of the screen. And um, this fourth parameter right here, we put zero to indicate that it's a directed source rather than a positioned source. Right here we had one, it's positioned. Here it's zero because it's a directed light source. And down here we actually draw the four faces of a box that we're going to show. And um, for each box we need a call to GL normal 3F, which what that is, is it tells OpenGL the normal of the face that we're going to draw. What the normal is, is it's a, ver it's a vector that is perpendicular to the face. And we need to let OpenGL know what this is because, for instance, if the normal is almost opposite to the direction of the light, then we want the light to be... We want the face to be lit a lot because the light is shining directly on it. But if the light is coming in almost perpendicular, or sorry, almost parallel to the face, then we all want almost no light to come from, or we want the face not to be lit very much from that lighting source. So that's why we need to tell OpenGL the normal of each face when we're using lighting. And this call up here that I pointed out to GL enable GL normalize, it makes it so that OpenGL automatically scales these normals so that they have a magnitude of one, which is what OpenGL needs. And it has some kind of funny effects with um, when you call GL scale F. So we're just always going to use this and it'll automatically take care of scaling our normal vector. And in a later lesson, I'll tell you what we can do to make things a little bit faster. But for now, we'll just leave it at that. And we have our four faces, front, right, back, and left. And each one has a call to GL normal 3F right before the ver four vertices, indicating the normal to that face. And by the way, these normals have to point outward, which... um they have to point outward because the back of the face we don't want to get lit because we're usually dealing with closed surfaces so the back of the face just won't get any lighting because it'll all be absorbed by the faces in front of it so that's why we need to make sure that this normal points outward and let's see how it looks now so compile the project and run it and here we have it we have our red light source, which is coming mostly from the left, but a little bit in, a, a little bit out of the screen, and a little bit up. And we have our white light source, which comes from the right and above. And this is how our box is lit. And there's one other concept I'd like to tell you about. It's called smooth shading. Now, a lot of the time when we draw polygons in OpenGL, we want them to represent 3D figures, or smooth figures, like a sphere, for instance. And if we were to just draw a bunch of polygons for a sphere, then it would look like this figure on the left. It looks kind of ugly because of all this lighting. You can see the individual faces. But if we use smooth shading, we can actually make this sphere look like this, and it's hardly any extra processing time. And it looks a lot more like a sphere over here, but it's actually the same set of polygons, which you'll notice it has a jagged outline, because it's actually... the polygons aren't very many. And how does this work? Well, what we do is, at each of the vertices, um, instead of the normal to the face, we use the normal of the actual sphere that we're trying to approximate. And then anywhere on this face, say somewhere in the middle, it'll just average those normals together to find a different normal that it'll use for shading that particular point. So that's how we get this to look nice and smooth. And it's much better than adding lots of extra polygons because it takes, it takes hardly any extra time to render this compared to this, actually, which is pretty cool. So now let's see this in action. 
let's say our box is supposed to approximate a circle, which is kind of stupid. I mean, a square isn't a very good approximation of a circle, unless you're drunk or something, but whatever, we'll just see what we can do. So what I'm going to do is I actually have everything set up with these commented outlines. So I'm going to uncomment them out and comment out the calls to GL normal 3F that we already had. So once I comment these all out, you'll see that there's a call to GL normal 3F before every call to GL vertex 3F. And what that does is it makes it so that we specify the normal for each vertex, not just for each face. And we specify it right before calling GL vertex 3F. So these normals are the real normals that we would expect on the circle that it's approximating. And one other thing we have to do is we have to go back up to the init rendering function and uncomment this out so that we have the shading smooth by changing the shade model to GL smooth before we had it on, or we may have had it on GL flat before, which is um, just flat shading, not smooth shading. So if we wanted to change it back, we could call GL shade model GL, GL flat. So at any rate, that, that does it for our smooth shading. And let's take a look at what that actually does, how our program looks. So here we go. It has a nice smooth gradient across the face from red to white, or rather from reddish yellow to yellow because um, of the different colors shining on the different edges of this face. And that's the idea behind smooth shading, and that's the basics of how we do lighting in OpenGL.